We're back to another episode of Michael's Home Movies. Just kidding. This is the Coffee Bowling Channel. Oh. Okay. So, we're talking about Bowling Ball Surface today and why it's going to allow you to get more strikes and why you should do it. So, the first reason is the longevity of your bowling ball. Are you sick and tired of your bowling balls? They hook a lot and then they end up just dying in you know, like 40, 50 games. Well, if you take care of your bowling balls with the, per with the proper maintenance stuff, your bowling ball will last a long time, maybe even years. So keep that in mind. That's one reason to do it. And for one, with the right surface combination, your ball is going to strike a lot more. It's going to go through the pins as good as it possibly can, opposed to having it at the wrong surface and it not uh, functioning properly. Okay, so when it comes to changing the surface on your bowling ball, what might you do that with? Well, if you want to get super scientific, an abrasive surface. No, that does not mean asphalt. So, Fire. most of everybody watching my video, you all know what an Averlon pad is, and you all know what, well, you actually don't know what this is. This is auto body wet sanding paper. Now, I'm going to explain why this is a, an awesome tool to use when changing your surface, but only on certain bowling balls, whereas these are for the most part going to be the ones that you're always going to use. So, with that in mind, you have a lot of different things you can do to change the surface of your bowling ball. So why use auto body sanding paper over the plethora of different surfaces with your Avalon pads? Well, not every bowling ball is the same amount of hardness. Actually, this is going to blow your mind if you don't really are up to, up to date with this kind of information. So. For example, a urethane ball is much, much, much harder than a resin ball. Now, obviously there are some urethanes that are softer than other urethanes, and there are some resin balls that are harder than other resin balls, but for the most part, if you're going to compare just urethane to a resin ball, the resin ball will be sanded away immediately by this, and this is something that you would really only use to cut down plug work on a resin ball, otherwise you would use these pads. Now, on a urethane ball, this is going to give it a this is actually going to scrape through a urethane ball's hard surface and give it a nice texture and the texture is going to last a lot. I've noticed over a lot of months of using this just for my urethane balls, it keeps a dull surface, it doesn't shine up over time. So that's the major reason why you want to pay attention to using the different pads on the bowling balls. Some bowling balls are definitely softer than other ones and you'll definitely notice it when you start to sand them. What's up guys, I'm Jacob, the Pro Shop Manager here at Bowlers Martin side of Bolero, Melbourne. I'm here to go over some stuff about surface management with you today. So a lot of times I have customers, they'll come in, they bring in a bowling ball they've had for a long time, hasn't had the surface ever adjusted, and they start to see, oh hey, my ball reaction is a little bit longer, it's not quite as much off the back end, it's a little bit lazy, it seems like my ball doesn't do what it quite wants to do anymore. And usually one of the first things I end up doing is breaking out these. Now each one of these pads has a specific number on it, 360, 500, 1,000, 2,000, all the way up to four. These pads have different amounts of roughness on it. They're gonna make the ball a little bit more dull, a little bit smoother, helps change where the ball slows down on the lane. I'll tend to use these duller, more dull pads here when I'm bowling on a very, very heavy oil condition, or if I'm trying to get a speed dominant bowler to match up to a cover stock that tends to be a little bit too clean for them. You, mainly more so the 500 and 1,000 for the speed dominant bowlers, sometimes up to 2,000 if they need a ball to get down the lane a little bit more. And then vice versa, if I get a bowler that comes in that's extremely rev dominant, maybe super slow ball speed has a lot of hand on it, but like 11, 12 miles an hour ball speed can't get the ball down the lane far enough. We usually skip over these dull ones, go straight to the 3,000, 4,000, wet sand them. Even in some cases, break out the good old reactor shine. Step two compound helps get the ball a lot further away from you before it starts to slow down. Now in some specific cases, say you're doing a deep resurfacing, Lots of maintenance needs to be done on the bowling ball, or you're trying to build up surface on a urethane bowling ball for a shorter but heavy pattern, we break out the wet sandpaper. Now I must note, this stuff needs to be used with a lot of water to make sure that one, you don't flat spot your bowling ball, and two, it maintains the threading on this a lot better, this sound right here. Same with these pads, but it's much more important to use it on the wet sandpaper. This is specifically to be used with water only. Do not use this dry, it will mess up your bowling ball. This stuff you can use dry. A lot of times if you're on the lanes and you see your bowling ball is going a little too long, you want to break out one of these pads, but you don't have time to run to the bathroom and wet it, 
that's fine. Just make sure you coat the ball nice and evenly. Do all six sides by hand nice and even. Make sure you can see the kind of same surface visually all the way around. All right, so we're going to run through some of the bowling balls I use here on the house shot here at Bolero, Bolero Melbourne and what surfaces I use them at. First off, phase two, solid cover stock. We keep this at about 2,000 grit. Looks really good on the fresh for about a game or so. Then we start to transition out of the solid shells into something hybrid. This is about 2,000, 3,000, somewhere in that general range. A little cleaner, still controls the mid lane, doesn't see the front part of lane as much as phase two. Eventually, these both get to be a little too early. We move into balls like the Trend. This one's at about a light 3,000, just enough to break up the factory shine more than anything. Gives me a little less mid lane hook than these two. Gives me a little more mid lane stability than the High Road Pearl. Lastly, I have this ball here, the High Road Pearl. It's at like 4,000, a little bit of reactor shine over top of that. Clears the front really good. Doesn't give me too much mid lane hook. It's more of a ball for burn in extreme friction conditions. Helps me get the ball as far away from me as possible. And that's where all these surfaces are there for. Sometimes you need a little bit of early hook. Sometimes you need some little middle of the road. Sometimes you need lots of length. And that's what all these pads and different polishes are here for, to help you out. So the major difference between what surfaces you need on a resin ball and what surfaces you need on a urethane ball. So urethane balls, I will go pretty crazy with them. I'll go anywhere from 360 to 1,000. Now, I consider 1,000 grit pretty shiny for a, bowl, for a urethane bowling ball. So if you're throwing urethane and it just seems like it's hooking too early with the surface you put on it and it's not, it doesn't look good, that means it's probably just not time to throw urethane. When urethane is going to work good and produce a lot of strikes, it's going to work well with a lot of surface on it so I can dig through the lane. But if you have a ton of surface on it that's not working there and you feel like it needs to be shinier, then it's probably not just not the right condition for it. Now, a reactive resin, this is a solid shell phase two. Now, this is more broad information for more than just a phase two. Any solid shell ball. I generally won't take a resin solid shell ball lower than 500 and 500 is pretty extreme. That's only for extreme situations. A thousand is usually going to be dull enough because a resin ball is going to grab the lane. It just The cover stock itself just produces a lot of friction between the lane uh, and the ball compared to a urethane ball. So if you oversurface it, it may change direction too much. Now, if it's way, way shiny, it may not go to the pins properly. So that's the one thing. So you can adjust the resin ball, and even with uh, pearl balls. Like a pearl ball, I'm probably not going to take it lower than 2,000, but it, it just depends. Some, some pearl covers work differently than others. So, you know, there are some times where a solid shell ball will be, you know, will hook later down lane than a pearl one just depending on what kind of surface or cover strength you got so anyways anywhere on a solid shell ball or a pearl ball you, you don't really need to go past a thousand uh for my pearls i keep them anywhere from like two thousand to four thousand and the and how i determine that is how much oil i'm bowling on or when i'm going to use it so two thousand is going to really make it hook a lot Four thousand is going to make it get down lane probably the maximum amount so same with the solid shell ball solid shells i'm probably not going to sand Dollar in a thousand, I'm probably not going to make them shinier in three thousand, depending on what I'm bowling on. So that's the major difference for surfaces between urethane and resin. I'm going to throw a couple of shots for you guys, and I'm going to do have a ball at, or I'm going to have a resin ball at 500, like I mentioned, and I'm going to show you how extreme that is. Now, I'm going to also have a, I'm going to take that same ball, I'm going to use an axiom for all of these shots, and I'm going to take it to a thousand, and then I'm going to show it to you at two thousand, and then. You know, I'll talk a little bit on what the difference is that you saw.
now that you've seen the Axiom at 500 grit, like I said before, it's it's pretty extreme and it will work in certain scenarios, but usually it's just going to force you to move way too soon, whereas you may not need to move nearly as early on the lane like as like the 1000 grit. The 1000 grit is, it just makes it dig really hard and it's not going to be too much, so it's kind of in the threshold a little bit, but 2000 on some drier conditions can make it almost appear as kind of angular. So those are just some different uh, surfaces that you can see. And now that you've seen them, maybe you'll apply them to your own stuff. So if you like this video, like and subscribe, or if you want to see more cool content, uh, drop a comment in the comment section about, you know, what surfaces you guys like to use the best. So that being said, see you next time.